We need credible witnesses. In truth, the church has always needed credible witnesses. As we heard in the gospel, the principal reason why our Lord manifests his physical resurrection to his disciples, even to the point of eating grilled fish before their eyes, so they wouldn't mistake him for any ghost or any other story or any other narrative, is so that they could be witnesses to that reality, to the reality of his resurrection. And as we all know, ultimately they witness to the reality, to the truth of the reality of the resurrection by shedding their blood for it. Rather than deny it, they shed their blood for it. It's the foundation of the church. But perhaps it begs a question that might be rising in our hearts. And why does God use witnesses? Why doesn't God just appear to us all? Or why doesn't God just use or use infused knowledge, infuse knowledge into every human mind so that they could be certain about his existence? Well, actually, there are many reasons for this. We could go on all night. But in the spirit of today's readings, I just want to focus on one very practical reason why God chooses to use witnesses. And that is God knows best and because God knows best we can have every confidence that by becoming credible witnesses that being credible witnesses is the best way that we can become saints and get to heaven because what is a witness a witness is someone whose life and whose words quite literally make the reality of God present in our world as present you might think as if Jesus Christ was standing next to you eating grilled fish it is to paraphrase the words of Cardinal Suad it is to live and speak in such a way that it makes absolutely no sense unless God exists so shedding your blood rather than deny the reality of the resurrection is an obvious, perhaps the most powerful example of witness. Now that makes absolutely no sense unless God exists. You would not shed your blood unless God exists. Priestly and religious celibacy, which is meant to be a powerful sign in today's unchaste world of the reality of the relationship we will have in heaven that we are literally married to God for all eternity. Now, celibacy and religious life would make absolutely no sense unless God exists. Turning down an invitation tonight to go to a party or to go and play sports or to do some overtime at work to make some more money because you know you need to come to Sunday Mass would obviously make absolutely no sense unless God exists exists but whether it be a blood martyrdom or whether it's simply telling your colleague at work tomorrow or tonight that you attend mass every sunday and so you cannot work on sunday your mass is the priority if you shed your blood or you tell your boss that the reality of god the reality of god's existence is being made present in those circumstances and it's a very real presence it shocks people And as you've heard me say before, you know, I'm I'm all for defending the logic and the intelligence of the Catholic faith. You know, I believe in the power of reasoned argument. However, even if I could offer you the most powerful, most compelling, most persuasive argument for God's existence through the use of reason, it will never have the same evangelizing power as even the smallest act of public witness because the difference between an intellectual argument not that and I say they're very important but the difference between an intellectual argument and a public act of witness a credible witness is that a witness has a much higher capacity much higher chance to touch the heart to captivate the heart of those who observe yeah, that when, when, when someone sees something that's a witness to God, it might unnerve them, it might make them feel uncomfortable. 
But still, what's unnerving them, what's perturbing them, is that they're being confronted with the reality of God, the reality of God's existence. It's not enough for us just to believe in God, right? Even the devils believe in God. It's not enough. It's absolutely fundamental that we show that we love God, that we love God by the way we live and the way we speak. I'll give you a small example. Not that long ago, sitting out at a restaurant and everyone at the table were priests. They're all my priest mates. And we weren't being very good witnesses because we weren't wearing clerical dress. We were dressed like you are, casually. And it's a very busy, very busy restaurant. And I noticed the table next to us, mum and dad with three teenage sons. And I noticed when the waiters put down their food, I noticed they all stopped, unprovoked, all stopped. The whole family made the sign of the cross and they prayed, bowed their head and prayed grace in that restaurant. Now I remember seeing that and my own heart being moved that they had made God present in that place. In that very small gesture, they brought the reality of God and seeing the waiters and waitresses, they didn't care. They brought the reality of God. They reminded everyone that was sitting around them of God's existence, of their faith in the resurrection. Now, sure, they could have all stepped back and said, we better keep our faith private. You know, what might people think of us if they see us blessing ourselves? But if they would thought like that, then my own heart wouldn't have been moved and inspired. And God knows what they did for that waiter or that waitress that saw them make the sign of the cross. It might have been the first time in God knows how long that the idea of God had come to their thoughts, that simple act of public witness. Now, Pope Francis has said something very similar. He said, when we have no witness, when we are not striving to be witnesses, yeah, then perhaps life goes on well. We earn well, we get lots of money, we have a good profession, a good job, and a family. But he said, if we're, you might have all that. He said, but yet, we become men and women who are parked in life. We become men and women who are parked in life. Parked in life. That's an interesting expression. And what he means is, by this, he said, is that we do not go on ahead. We do not move. We do not truly move on in our existence. We've got all the comforts, but we're not truly moving on to heaven if we're not witnesses. And he says, those who do not take risks do not move. They do not move. They are in spiritual paralysis. How easy it is for us, priests and laity alike, to become a little parked in life, where everything is being driven by our desire just to be comfortable and have an easy life. But we know that's not the gospel. Show me someone who got to heaven by doing what's comfortable and easy. It doesn't exist. You cannot be a saint, you cannot get to heaven if we only do what is comfortable and easy. So to stop being parked in life and to become credible witnesses, we need to ask for the grace to do two things. First, we must live in accordance with God's commandments. Listen again to the words of the second reading. St. John says, anyone who says, I know Christ, but does not keep his commandments is a liar refusing to admit the truth. Now, St. John's been obviously very blunt here, but with good reason. We cannot truly witness to the love of God. We cannot truly say we love God if we do not try, aspire, to live a life that's in conformity with the moral law. Now, we all struggle with this. We all fear hypocrisy. The priest, most of all, I'm the one that's got to get up here and preach about everything that I struggle with. But we can't use that as an excuse because even if we are striving to be credible witnesses, we might not be the full package, but even that is enough. The fact that we are striving to live the moral law, that is enough to be something of a witness in today's world. The second thing is that we cannot be credible witnesses unless we take risks. Unless, as Pope Francis would say, unless we are prepared to risk dirtying our hands. If we don't take risks for our Catholic faith, then our faith goes nowhere. It is paralyzed. 
It goes no more, it goes no further, and will have little effect really on our own lives, let alone the lives of others. But remember, God uses witnesses because he knows this is the best way for us to be saints and for us to influence and save the lives of others. There is no sanctity without risk. We do not really love God if we do not take risks for God. So I invite you as I invite myself to consider anew. How in my life, in this coming week, am I going to be a credible witness to my Catholic faith? How will I use my voice in my workplace, in my family life, in my day-to-day -day life to make God present? Because to put it bluntly, if we are not credible witnesses, then we are liars.